So today, okay, so the very first thing, um, I'm already beaming, but there's another amazing, important announcement. Um, I'm sure you guys might have heard if you are on Instagram, you've probably seen my story, you've probably seen the reel. Um, and yes, honestly, like, I'm really excited to announce that we are launching a podcast. Ah! And I'm really happy. Um, it's launching the 1st of May. That's it's going to launch the 1st of May with a bit of a bang. So we are going to drop four weeks worth of pod of podcast episodes. And we're talking like the first one I know is like 45 minutes long. Um, and basically it's, it, there's going to be literally four weeks worth of stuff that you can binge listen to. That's going to drop on the 1st of May. It's going to be a weekly pod podcast. So every single week there will be a new one. Um, and also we're going to kick things off on the 1st with a live like celebration party type thing. Um, and also I'm going to be actually answering questions live and recording a podcast episode live. So I'm going to be going live on a Wednesday um, and we're going to be recording a live episode episode but yeah basically we are doing a podcast it's basically going to be our new library of up-to-date in-depth content talking about not just Etsy talking about all aspects of having a handmade biz business and it's basically just me sat here with a microphone cup of cup of tea just talking and just riffing and just basically being like here is what I've seen here's what I'm doing here's this here's that and um, basically think of the YouTube channel, think of the blog posts, but think of it much more in depth. The only thing I would say that I would love for you guys to do is if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts when it does go up, that would be amazing. It just helps us to get pushed, pushed out. But that's the only thing, like that is, that is it. And between the 1st to the 15th of May, if you do that, you get entered in with a really juicy competition. And when I say juicy, I mean juicy, it's going to be good. What we're going to be doing today, moving on, is I'm going to be doing a very quick run through. Episode one of the podcast is going to be doing a real in-depth look at the algorithm and how it works and how you can leverage it, um, what things you can change to fit in with what they want and what things you just straight up can't. But today I want to just do a very quick run through of the algorithm as it stands. Okay. So when you do a search on Etsy, okay, so you're typing in a uh, cockapoo dog mum top or silver elephant bracelet or um, rabbit dreamy art print something like that, Leah, I'm thinking of you right now. Um, two things happen in a split second, not even a split second, like a second of a second of a second of a second of a second, right? Something happens, okay? And one of those two things are query matching. So that's the first thing. And query matching, for some reason in my head, it always comes down to Craigslist. I don't know why, I'm, I just always have that in my head. It's basically a massive list of all of the listings that fit with one or all of those words. So for example, if you're like silver elephant bracelet, you will get a list of all of the listings that have those words in them. So as you can imagine, that's a lot. It's a lot. And that's the first part. So that's not actually what you see on the screen because something else happens that I'm going to be going into in a minute. But Basically, Etsy will go, right, we're going we're, we're gonna to look at all of the info that the shop owner has given us about listing A, B, C, D, E, F, U, blah, 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 and we're going to create a list of all of them that we think, based on the info that we're giving through the titles, tags, attributes, descriptions, uh, alt image text, all those kinds of things, we are going to be like, let, let's make a good old list, okay? So as you can imagine, that list is blimmin' massive, okay? So that's part one. Then part two is ranking. So once that they've they've gathered all of the listings that match the query that the uh, user has typed into the search box, they then use seven ranking factors to sort those out and to rank them. It's kind of like getting scores in a in a in a race and having like player one, player two, player three. It's kind of like that, right? What you have to remember is there's a human being, there's a pair of eyes, there's a pair of hands, there's a key, a keyboard, a mouse, whatever. There's a human being behind the keyboard, behind the screen, behind the iPad, behind the phone, doing that search. So what's going on in their heads? In their heads, they have a rough idea 
of A, the item that they want, and they have an, almost like, an, like a bird's eye image in their head of what they would want to see on the page as results, or B, they have a feeling they want to get. So the feeling they want to get if they're looking to buy a gift could be, I want to make my mum smile. I want to make my auntie have the best birthday she's ever had. I want to welcome my best friend to her new, to her new home. Um, I want to I want to see X person have Y re, re, reaction. Or, like I said before, they have an idea of the item they want in their head. And I really want you guys to just make sure that 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 is something that you guys get because what I fear is is that so many Etsy gurus and SEO people are really just looking at the data and they're not looking at the human behind the data because it's the human behind the data. We don't make buy, buying decisions based off of data numbers. We are making them based off of emotions. And it's really easy to completely forget that. The seven ranking factors are as follows. Now they're kind of ranked with not really much of an importance really, but as you'll, as you'll kind of get to hear and see, there are some that you can influence and there are some that you can't, okay? So number one is rel relevance. That's the first factor. Number two is listing quality score. Number three is recency. Number four is customer and market experience score. You might have heard this once referred to as ODR. No one knows what that means anymore, but now it's customer and market experience score. Now, by the way, these are not scores or numbers or measurements that you can see. This all happens behind the scenes. It's a very secret process um, and it's basically changing every single day because of how their AI search works. OK, it's nothing to be scared of. It is just the fact that it's learning all the time. It's slightly changing all the time. But these seven ranking factors will not change. Number five is postage price. Number six is translations and language. And number seven is shopper habits. OK, relevancy. Relevancy is simply looking at how relevant your listing is to what the buyer typed into the search bar. OK, so something that I did and I'll do this right now. If I'm looking for a silver elephant bracelet, I need to spell elephant correctly. First of all, that might help, mightn't it? So I'm looking for a silver elephant bracelet. In my head, I'm looking for a silver, almost like an open link charm bracelet, 925. And I'm looking for almost like a charm bracelet with an elephant charm coming, coming off of it. As the buyer, that's what I'm looking for. So you can imagine, I'm not going to be clicking on this because it's not silver. It's not a silver color. So that's a no, that's a no, that's a no. That's a no, that's a no, that's a no, that's a no. That's a yes, kind of, but I'm going to kind of favorite, favorite that and I'm going to keep going. That's almost, maybe that's almost, mm, that's a no, that's a no. So can you see, looking at it from the SEO perspective and a visual buyer perspective, how the search changes through each pair of eyes. It's important to be relevant, succinct and specific with your terms. Because let's say for for example, this here is an elephant ring. I have not typed in silver elephant ring, but this shop owner has used silver elephant bracelet in their listing. And this is why because someone typing in what I've just typed typed in, silver elephant bracelet, is not going to click on that. So what's going to happen is that that list is going to go down and down and down and down because I'm not re I'm not using it. I'm not reacting with it because it's not what I'm what I'm after. So it's why let's say you do unicorn party favors, and maybe you're like, okay, I've seen unicorn party bag. I'm going to use that in my SEO in the hopes of driving some kind of people who are looking for that. That's why doing that, in fact, might hurt your listing and not help it. Also make sure to fill out your attributes and use this as a major factor in relevancy. Now, attributes are tricky because a lot of people will say, 
it's Christmas and my silver elephant bracelet can be used as a, Chris, a Christmas gift. I wouldn't do that. I would keep it pretty open when it comes to, to, to attributes and things. However, if you have a Christmas scented candle and you're like, yes, this is definitely a Christmas scent. This can only be used for said occasion. Then definitely use that at attribute within your item. The next thing obviously is listing quali quality score. And as previously mentioned, Etsy wants people to find items they actually want to purchase. And Etsy will look at clues as to what items you might like based on your shopper habits, how your listing has historically performed for people that are searching for what it is that you sell. Now also reviews and conversion rate are paramount to this. So your listing quality score, think about what quality score is okay no it's not a box of chocolates or a tin rather or, or a tub it is something where etsy's looking for sig for signals that this is a good listing people are buying it people like it this shop is decent they're not going to run off with your money they're not going to ship the item late they respond to messages quickly blah -de blah -de blah -de blah all right so this could include things also like geographical location, which obviously you guys cannot control. All right. So don't worry about that one. But it's just a, fa a factor here. Uh, and things that you've clicked on slash bought before will change your search results as a buyer. Let's talk about recency. OK, so if you're sat there and you're thinking, all right, my I have this new listing, I have a new shop. So how does that work? Because if 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 I am new and I have new listings, it will never get any boosts because they're new and they won't get seen and therefore the listing quality, quality score will not build up. And that is where recency comes, comes in. So if your listing is new and has nothing, no reviews, no sales, then all you would ever see from Etsy if recency wasn't a factor is old listings. But Etsy helps new listers out or new listings or new shops by in, by implementing recency. And what this means is that new listings will get a small boost so that you can see how shoppers react to it. So it's basically like Etsy putting on their like white lab coat and being like, okay, let's, let's assess how people are interacting with it. Okay. And then after the recency, and no one knows, by the way, how long or short it is. I think from my exper experience here is that it will depend on how many people are viewing. So if you sell a uh, silk cat lampshade, that's going to get less traffic and therefore it will need more time for more viewers for Etsy to see how that listing will go versus silver elephant bracelet that will get a lot more views and therefore the time will be a lot shorter. So customer and marketplace experience score is a big deal, okay, because Etsy doesn't want the negative vibes of a scorned customer, right? So that's why your shop has a secret score that very few people on the planet actually knows about, but it is there and it's always watching. So great reviews. And by the way, with this, they take an average of the last 12 months. If you've got a negative review, like one star six months ago, whatever, like it will be effectively wiped off of your score after 12 months. So just, I just thought I would like to mention that. Completed about section, great review, shop pol policy. These are all things that Etsy says helps. What you don't want is you don't want recent cases, copyright strikes or IP infringement notices, because these are all signals to Etsy that there's a bit of funny business going on here and we're not really sure. So postage price, I know this is a bit of a bone of, con of contention, this, this can be a lot of, pe of people off. Um, but when surveyed, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you view it, Etsy buyers have always said that they were more likely to buy something with free postage or a low shipping cost. Items, as you guys know, with the free US uh, shipping guarantee turned on are reported to have higher search rankings. Not only this, but items with free postage are shown to convert better, helping your listing quality score eventually. So can, can you see how each factor can actually affect another one? You know, because obviously if your postage price price is free, you're going to convert better, aka your listing quality score is going to go up. OK, now my general rule of thumb, a very general rule of thumb, there's going to be certain people who can't do it for whatever reason. That's fine. Is if your postage price is 10 pounds or about 12, 13 dollars or under, stick it in your item cost 
Okay, like I'm not I'm not saying you have to lose that money, put your prices up to accompany that, make your profits higher, and then take off the postage price. This is some this is a very common practice. A lot of people do it, a lot of businesses do it, Gucci does it everyone does it you know when they're like get free postage on uh, orders over like 20 pounds that's basically them saying yeah we've already put it in the in the item cost you're paying for postage but you're not paying for postage you know so let's look at language and translation so your main language should be the one that you list your items in aka your first language the one that you speak fluent fluently i'm not lucky enough to have a brain that can learn more than one language. And I really applaud those who can speak two, three, four. I'm like, wow, you amaze me. But for me, I can't. So for example, for me, English would be my my first language, my only language because of my sad brain. Um, but if you spoke English and German, what this means is that you might get a slight boost because you can translate your listings a lot better than what Etsy's AI could ever do. Shopper habit. So have you ever wondered, and I've wondered this, why, and it's happened to me over the last few days because I've been looking for like mattresses and flooring and because we're doing up the spare room and I'm like Googling all these things. The minute I do, I get ads everywhere. Ads for flooring, ads for being cute, ads for home base, ads for mattresses, ads for this, ads for that. Have you ever kind of wondered what is the deal with this? Well, it's basically it's not it's not magic, all right. Sorry, but it's not. It's a common tracker, a cookie, right? That's been placed in your browser that monitors what you look at and shows personalized ads and items that you're more likely to click on based on what you've shown interest in in the past. So, more specifically for Etsy, this is called CSR, context specific ranking, and it's a nifty bit of a of AI that serves you up what you like today based on what you showed interest in yesterday, all right? It's not something that you can particularly influence, okay? So like I said right at the beginning of this, is it's not something that you can be like, I can influence shopper habits, I can do it, I swear I can. It's not really, because it really depends on what you've clicked on in the past, all right? Also, the list of thon challenge, if you are, and this is a free challenge, by the way, like I'm not charging you anything for this. It starts the 3rd of June, okay? And I'm gonna be looking and, and showing you and teaching you how to list items in a way, not just SEO. We, we've gone deep on just SEO. We've gone deep on one specific thing. If you want to see how this works in an overarching theme, then you need to join me in the list, the listathon challenge, handmadebosses.com forward slash list listathon. It's basically going to be a two week challenge to get all of your ideas listed, done, created in a way that's going to make them sell and not just sit, sit still. Because at the end of the day, you're not making money if your products are just sat there doing naffle. <laughs> Guys, thank you again so much for joining me. Bye, everybody.